Hi there, welcome to this webinar on Zoho Desk new features. Thank you for joining us today. Just in case you didn't know, this is the part two of the What's New webinar series. In the first part, David Elkins showcased Zoho Desk process automation capabilities. If you haven't seen it yet, you can check it out here at this link. Don't worry, you'll find the link in the video description as well. But first, a quick intro before we get started with this session. There are two hosts today, Ramita and myself, Vijay. We're both marketers for Zohoresk. Hey there! A warm welcome to everyone who tuned in today. It's exciting to be here. It is, isn't it? Because we've got a really useful bunch of features lined up for you all today. Yep. Plus, this is going to be our first major release since our product launch. Oh yeah, that's right. It is. Let me quickly pull up a timeline of Zohoresk releases over the last year, just so you know where we stand today. So here's a story. We launched Zohodesk in November 2016, and over the following year, we announced quite a few integrations with cloud telephony players like Amazon Connect and Ring Central. Along the way, we also introduced a lot of features for both support agents and managers. Not to mention the progress we've had with integrations with other apps as well, like Zoho Reports, Jira, and Zoho Assist, just to name a few. And later, we introduced improvements to the user interface so that your experience with Zoho Desk is even more comfortable. And most recently, we also introduced a few announcements to make Zoho Desk GDPR compliant. Yeah, so this is where we stand now. But what we have in store for you today is a bunch of features that can take your customer service up a few notches. Here's the lineup of the seven new features that we'll cover today. How about we take down showcasing them, Ramita? Sure, that sounds good. Let me start with ASAP then. Sure. So what exactly does ASAP do? In a nutshell, ASAP is a set of tools that allow you to embed your help center into your application. This could be your web app, your mobile app, or even your website. To give you a clearer picture, let's use an example to illustrate how the ASAP plugin works. Mm, how about online food ordering? Let's say you try ordering food from a restaurant using a mobile app. Your payment goes through, but your order doesn't get confirmed. What do you do now? You'd obviously want to reach out to the support team. So you close the app, look up the company's website, and head to the Contact Us section. You look up the details there and then reach out to the support team to talk about the issue that you're facing. As simple as it sounds, the whole process involves five different steps and requires you to switch between your food ordering app and your web browser. What if there was an easier way for you to reach out to the support team? Like bringing the health center to you. So, you can reach out to the support team without leaving the app. That's exactly what ASAP helps you do. Now let's see this feature in action. We have a company called Zilker that sells electronic gadgets like smartphones, smartwatches and tablets. And this is Zilker's support page, also called the help center that customers would usually visit to find answers to their questions. Now. For the benefit of folks who do not know what an online support portal comprises, here's a walkthrough of the different components of the help center. The most important section is the knowledge base, which houses the help articles grouped into categories. The search bar here makes it easy for customers to find relevant answers from the knowledge base quickly. Apart from these, the help center also has a chat widget that lets customers chat with support agents in case they aren't able to find answers in the knowledge base. And if they want to submit a ticket, they can do that as well using this form. Apart from these features, the Help Center also includes a community feature. The community is an engagement platform which lets customers interact with each other through forums. They can post questions, suggestions, ideas, or even talk about a problem that they might be facing. Support agents and managers can also use the community feature to make announcements to their customers. Now let's take a look at ASAP. Let's pull up Zilker's online store where customers go to buy their products online. Zilker has embedded ASAP into this page. You see the widget here? Whenever a customer needs help, they can just click on the icon and this pulls up the help center right on this web page. Like in the help center we just saw, customers can search through the knowledge base for answers. They can read through articles and also up or downvote them. And what if they don't want to do all this searching? No problem, they can just talk to Zia. So, Zia is a really exciting feature that we're releasing this month. 
Zia is Zoho Desk's conversational AI for customer service. When a customer needs help, they can just chat with Zia and get all the answers they want. Let's type in a question here and Zia will give you a relevant answer. It's as easy as it looks. And if a customer wants to submit a ticket, they can do that as well. By clicking on this button here, they can just fill in the details of the issue and when they submit it, a ticket gets created in Zoho Desk. Now imagine embedding your help center into your mobile app. That would be really convenient for your customers seeking help. So that's what ASAP can do for you. But there's even more to Zia, which isn't just a bot. Oh yeah, of course. So Zia is the next feature that we're going to look at. Before we dig into the feature, here's a little stat on the direction customer service is headed in. According to a study by Gartner, by 2020, customers will manage 85% of their relationship with the enterprise without interacting with a human. So that's a lot of chatbots, AI powered tools and automated self-service technologies that are going to be used by businesses across the globe. So how is Zia going to help you stay ahead of the curve? As Ramita pointed out, Zia is conversational AI for customer service. AI as an augmented intelligence for your customer service team. Which means that this isn't about replacing human agents, but more about complementing them with added intelligence that can help them work smarter and faster. Let me pull up this layered architecture to show you where Zia slots in. At the heart of Zoho Desk is an AI engine. So you will see that at different places in the product, Zia plays a key role in executing functionalities that help you with your support operations. And you have businesses such as yours as the top layer here. There are four benefits that businesses can draw from Zia. Chat assistance, anomaly reporting, context tagging, sentiment analysis, and real-time insights. Let's go through each one. The first one is of course, the chatbot that we just saw where your customer or prospects can chat with Zia and receive answers. The natural language processing that we've built into Zia will allow her to understand what your customers are saying and reply with relevant answers, just the way a human would. So your customers can get answers quickly and your agents are gonna have plenty of time freed up to focus on more important complex requests instead of the manual repeatable chores. With time, this can compound into several days saved for your agent team and quicker answers can translate to happier customers too. Zia can also detect anomalies in your customer service process. So what's an anomaly? Let's define that first. Any deviation from your usual ticket traffic is an anomaly. By ticket traffic, we are referring to the incoming requests from your customers and outgoing responses from agents. The anomaly detection feature in Zia takes the incoming and outgoing traffic from the last 30 days and plots a trend line. Zia will then compare the actual ticket traffic on any given day, which includes customers reaching out to you and your team's response to these tickets with this trend line. If the incoming or outgoing responses deviate from the trend, then Zia will raise alerts to the people that you specify. And these alerts appear in the product screen on the footer panel. See the Zia icon here? Just click it and this opens up a right panel for you. Click on an alert and you'll see that Zia has the data visualized as a chart for you. This makes life easier for both agents and managers. If there's a fall in the rate of outgoing responses, you should be able to identify that there's a bottleneck somewhere in your service process. And oh, speaking of identifying bottlenecks, there's another way Zia helps you do that. That's the next benefit of Zia that we're going to look at, context tagging. If I can just open up a ticket for you, you'll see that there are a few keywords at the top here. This is another way Zia adds value to your support process. Zia can intelligently analyze conversations and pick up keywords from the text by understanding the context of the discussions. Notice that in this ticket, we have a keyword called refund, which tells you what this ticket deals with. Your agent team needn't spend hours pouring over conversations to understand what the ticket deals with. Zia does that for you. Now there's more to context tagging. All the keywords that Zia picks up from all your ticket conversations are used to create what we call keyword clusters. 
These are groups of related keywords. Zia gives each cluster a label. You can always change this label from your setup screen. With machine learning built in, Zia constantly learns from conversations and adds to these keyword clusters. In other words, Zia is always learning and getting better at what she does. So where are these labels going to be used? Within a ticket, you'll be able to see this option, which lets you label ticket with these tags. You can later go to the home screen and filter tickets by these tags. Now let's go back to a ticket. Zia does away with manual intervention here and automatically tags conversations. And these auto tags get added to the list in the home screen as well. Keeping track of tickets gets much simpler with these auto tags. Now that's not all. Zia also analyzes the tone of a conversation and comes up with a sentiment score. Within the unified ticket screen, you will see the score about the ticket conversation area. Zia gives each ticket either a positive, negative, or a neutral rating. Hover over this icon and you can see the rating. You can also go back to the list view and see these ratings for all the tickets. Now let me just go back to the classic view. So there's the sentiment score for every ticket in the list. With this score, your agent team will know if a customer is happy or upset even before they open up a ticket. That way, they will know which tickets need to be addressed first. But this raises a question, doesn't it? How can managers make sense of all of this and draw actionable insights? Surely, they can't screen each and every ticket for negative ratings or keywords. That's not going to be efficient, is it? So this is where the Automate module of Zohodesk plays a key role in combination with SIA. Head to the setup screen and choose workflows under the automate section. You can set up a workflow rule to send you alerts every time there's a ticket for which Zia picks up a negative keyword. And just to be sure, you can also set the criteria to pick only those tickets that carry a negative sentiment score. That way, you're aware whenever there's an upset customer. So here's an alert email in a manager's inbox. Pretty useful to help you act quickly before an issue flares up into a bottleneck for your customer service. There's another feature as well that managers would find quite useful, a new dashboard for Zia. The Zia dashboard will help you get a bird's eye view of all the functionalities of Zia that we just discussed at a single glance. You can compare the actual incoming and outgoing ticket traffic with the trend line here. And this section shows the aggregate percentages of positive, neutral, and negative sentiment scores for all threads. So you can know the health of your customer service without having to dig deep and analyze conversations. You also have the list of trending order tags here. Toggle this to check out the number of tickets that have been tagged with each word. So you know which issues have occurred the most. So that's Zia, quite a few functionalities packed in a single feature. Moving on, the next feature we're going to look at is Teams. When you set up Zoho Desk, you'll add agents. This feature lets you group agents into different teams. But why do you need to group them in the first place? This is useful when you need multiple support agents to manage a common set of activities, such as answering your support tickets from a particular channel, say social media or live chat or telephony, or grouping agents according to their expertise. So one team handles tickets that deal with a particular product, and another team handles tickets that deal with a different product. To create a team, just head to the Organization section under Setup. Teams is the second in the list here, right after Agents. Give it a suitable name and add a description. And select the agents you wish to add to this team. You can also combine your existing teams to create a new team. Just click on this drop-down and choose Teams. Not just that, 
You can also add folks into a team based on their roles or roles and subordinates. Ok, so we've added a team. What next? Well, take any automation feature in Zoho Desk. You can assign tickets to an entire team instead of a single agent. That way, if an agent within a team is offline, another agent with the same expertise can fill in for them and work continues unhindered. In other words, fewer bottlenecks for your company. You can also send alerts, assign tasks or escalate tickets to entire teams instead of a single agent. So that's what you can do with teams. Let's quickly look at the next feature then, ticket sharing. As the name suggests, this feature will help you drive collaboration between different departments. If you've already used Zoho Desk, you would know that usually collaboration happens by means of chat or by other ticket comments feature. But we wanted to aid collaboration for you using the existing UI components instead of introducing a completely new feature that you would have to learn and get used to. And it had to be simple too. So the easiest way to do that, well, just let agents share the ticket, as simple as that. When you have a ticket that needs the help of folks from another department, which is probably 90% of the time. That's true. Just open it up, click on this menu and select the option share. So let's say we share this ticket with the department uh, returns and refunds. You can choose among three permission levels here, full, restricted and read only access. With full access, agents can share tickets with read, reply and edit permissions. However, the departments that you share these tickets with will not be able to edit these two fields, ticket statuses and ticket assignees. With restricted access, you can share tickets with limited permissions. The folks that you share the tickets with will be able to view conversations, leave private comments and forward tickets. With read-only access, the agents you share the tickets with can just view the ticket and leave private comments. And we're going to choose full access. I'm going to quickly change the department here. Now, if you head to the share tickets view, you'll be able to see the list of all the tickets that have been shared with this department. Open it up and you'll see this label called shared here. And click on this text shared and you can view the department which shared this ticket and along with it, the permission level too. Collaboration is always better when it happens within the context of a ticket and that's exactly what ticket sharing lets you do. Moving on to the next feature then, the on hold status. If I have to describe this feature in a single line, well, it's a pause button for your help desk, but with wide implications. If you open up a ticket, you'll see this field, ticket status on your left. Click here and this pulls up a list of different statuses both built-in and user-defined statuses. Out of these values, open, on hold, escalated and closed are built-in. The rest are user-defined ones. But these are merely status names. You can see the status type from the settings screen. Earlier, there were two types of statuses, open and closed, to which all of these status names were mapped to. Now, you have a third type of status, on hold. Notice that this is a status type and not merely a name. So you'll now be able to define custom statuses of this type. So what happens when you put a ticket on hold? Usually when a ticket comes in, it carries an open status. Once the agent has resolved the issue, the ticket moves to the closed status. And if the ticket is not resolved within the due time, it gets escalated. Now here's where the on hold status comes in. Let's use a couple of scenarios to illustrate where the on hold status helps. Let's say this is an engineering ticket that's going to take a while to resolve. So the engineering team needs something like a month to build a fix. And the ticket would obviously become overdue by then and would get escalated. To avoid this from happening, the agent can simply put this ticket on hold. Essentially, pause the help desk clock for this ticket. Another situation when you'd need the on hold status is when you've replied to a ticket but the customer hasn't gotten back to you in a while. So you want to keep the ticket on hold for a few days and close it after a certain amount of time has passed. When you put a ticket on hold, the due times get recalculated. For example, 
Let's say that a ticket comes in at 10 a.m. and the due time, based on the business hours, is noon. At 11 a.m., you put the ticket on hold. Now let's say you move the ticket to open status again at 6 p.m. Then the due time is automatically recalibrated to 7 p.m. What's happened is that only the time for which the ticket carried the open status was considered in computing the due time. So basically, response and resolution times of an SLA do not apply to a ticket while it's on hold. You can also use the on hold status as a criteria in any of the automation features. Take workflows for example. You can set a rule that checks if the status of a ticket is on hold. If it is, then it would trigger an alert to the manager notifying that the status of the ticket has been changed to on hold. Likewise, you can play around with the status field or the ticket on hold time for setting up automations. For example, if we want to automatically close tickets that have been on hold for, say, 3 months, we can set a workflow rule. We'll set it to apply to all tickets and set the criteria as ticket on hold time is after and we set a date here. What this means is that the rule applies for all the tickets that have been put on hold after this date. And we'll set the action to a field update so that the ticket status is changed to closed for these tickets. As simple as that. So that's on hold status. Moving on, the next feature that we're going to look at is called time tracking. Which is almost the exact opposite of on hold. Oh yeah, you could say that. Because the time tracking feature will let you clock the amount of time an agent is spending working on a ticket. That way you can calculate the cost of customer service using the billable hours of an agent. So let's see how this feature works. Let's open up a ticket. When time tracking is activated, you'll see a counter at the top here. Just click here to start the timer when you begin working. And the clock's ticking now, recording the amount of time that's being spent on this ticket. Let's say you put this ticket on hold. In this case, you can just pause the timer. And when this ticket has been resolved, you can stop the timer. But what if you want the time tracking to happen automatically without the need for manual intervention? I'm pretty sure some of you would have thought of that. No problem. There's a way to set this on autopilot as well. Just head to the setup screen and you have the time tracking option under the customize section. You can now choose between manual and automatic time tracking. With auto, Zohodesk will automatically log the amount of time an agent spends working on a ticket. Likewise, you also have time tracking for tasks. As of yet, there's just a manual option here, but you can choose between consecutive and concurrent timers. Consecutive will run the timer for one task at a time. Let me head to the task module. So there's two tasks here. Let's start the timer for the first task. Now, if I head to the second task and start the timer here as well, I would get an alert that prevents me from doing so. In case of concurrent timers, you can run multiple time trackers in parallel. You also have the option to enable billing preferences here. Basically, you can specify the cost for the effort that agents put in depending on your line of business. You can allocate a single fixed hourly cost for all agents or you can specify costs for each agent individually. Just click on this icon to add the hourly cost for each agent. Or you can define the hourly cost based on the profile of an agent. For example, a newbie agent and a support lead would command different hourly rates. Or you can simply set a fixed rate for every ticket that gets sold. 
Now let's go back into the ticket to see where this cost gets reflected. Just open up a ticket that's in progress already and go to the time entry sub tab. You'll see the cost here based on the different instances spent by agents working on this ticket. But what if you want the total cost for all the tickets in a certain time frame? No problem. In the reports module, you can create a custom report, add the columns that matter to your business, and look up the cost and time spent for each ticket by each agent. Pretty neat, isn't it? So that sums up time tracking and a long list of features for Zohodesk. But we're not done yet. There's one really interesting announcement that we've kept for the end. We're launching a new mobile app called Radar. This is an app exclusively for support managers and it's got an amazing UI that's both intuitive and great at what it does. Here are the list of things that you'll be able to do with Radar. The first one is monitor the live ticket traffic which includes your incoming and outgoing responses. Change the duration here and you'll be able to see the stats for that period. Next, you can look at the split up of ticket traffic across different channels. So you have the number of tickets that have come in here for each channel. Change the filter setting here and you can see the stats for different agents. You can also look up the current stats, the total number of open, on hold, unassigned and overdue tickets. Again, you can see these stats for either a particular agent or for all of them. Radar will also give you the first call resolution stats. This is the number of tickets that have been resolved in the first call. The higher the number, the better the service. Average handling time or AHT is the time spent by an agent working on a ticket. There are three types of handling times that are shown here. First response time, response time and resolution time. Apart from all of this information, you also get to see a summary of happiness ratings from your customers. The percentages of tickets that have OK, good and bad ratings. Radar also lets managers look up the agent status. So if there's a high priority issue that needs to be assigned to someone in the team, the manager can quickly assign it to someone who's online. Just swipe a bit and you'll be able to see the team feeds. You can have conversations with all the members of your department here. Just tap on this plus sign to make a post. If you want to address someone in your team in particular, you can just tag them by typing an at followed by their name. You can also navigate to the different screens by choosing this radar logo at the bottom. This shows all the screens in the app. Radar can be really handy for managers to ensure that they don't miss even the tiniest of details. Well, now that we've run through a huge list of features in this webinar, how about a quick recap? We started with the ASAP add-on, which is a set of tools to bring your help center into your app or web page. Then there's Zohodesk Augmented Intelligence for Customer Service, Zia. We looked at the four different ways in which Zia can help you improve your customer service. We also looked at Teams that lets you group agents, particularly useful when you want to group agents according to their expertise or according to the levels of service that you provide. Then there's Ticket Sharing, a collaboration feature that lets your agents share tickets with other departments with a single click. The next feature that we looked at is on hold status, which is a status that puts a pause button on your help desk clock. This is useful when you're waiting for your customers to get back to you or if it's taking longer than usual to fix the issues, essentially under circumstances when you do not want tickets to pass their due time. We also looked at time tracking, which lets you clock the amount of time agents spend working on tickets and also helps you calculate the cost of customer service based on the hours spent by agents working on tickets and their hourly rate. Finally, we looked at Radar, a new mobile app that we are launching for support managers that'll let you track the live ticket traffic 
your overall ticket stats like the number of open and overdue tickets, first call resolution percentage, average handling time and a lot of other metrics that give you an idea about the health of your customer service at a glance. We've reached the end of this webinar. We really hope it was informative. Like always, we encourage you to give these features a spin and use them for a while to get the hang of them. And if you need any help setting up these features in your account, just drop us an email at support at zohodesk.com. Thank you for watching this webinar. Thank you folks and have a great day.